If there's one thing I've noticed during We Need Diverse Books Month, it is how these books showcase different ethnicities, but without letting them define their characters. It is so easy to slap in an ethnicity on a character and that's all that defines them, but these books do what is at the heart of We Need Diverse Books. No matter what, we are all human, with dreams, fears, hopes, desires, and everything in between. And this book continues to reinforce that ideal with a 12-year-old girl. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages, my name is David Popovich, aka The Bookworm, and welcome to Bookworm Reviews. Sit back and relax as we dive into The Thing About Luck by Cynthia Kadohata. is good luck in Japanese, and one year, my family had none of it. We were cursed with bad luck. This is summer, and like she said, this year basically sucks. But so would any year if you almost died from malaria. And that was just the beginning. Her parents had to go back to Japan to take care of their dying relatives. Her brother Jazz can't make a single friend. And as harvest season arrives, her grandparents have come out of retirement to harvest over the summer to help the family make ends meet, bringing Summer and Jazz along the way. Which for summer means, I would be trapped with my grandmother and Jazz for hours at a time. I mean, I love them, but thinking of spending all that time with them made me crazy. That's a lot for a 12 year old to deal with. But is there anything else we could add in just to make Summer's life a teeny bit harder? Come on, what you got? Robbie Parker sauntered out of the house with his hands in his pockets. He was 14 now, I thought, and had turned so good looking that I gasped and was really glad that I neatly braided my hair that morning. Boys, of course! Nothing like having buddy feelings for your boss's son. That should end well. That's the general plot in a nutshell. I know, there isn't that much of a plot for me to summarize. The Thing About Luck is not really a plot-heavy book. And when I mean plot, I mean a general three-act structure. Beginning, middle, end. Clear character arcs. The stuff we've been fed our entire lives. The plot is more loose and freeform. It has moments, but this is a slice of life character piece first and foremost. It's heartwarming, sweet, touching, and quirkily funny. Basically, it's a Sundance film. It's more or less focusing on the life of Summer and the people around her, dealing with whatever she comes across. Like, since she almost died from malaria, she has grown a fear, yet a fascination for mosquitoes. How something so tiny almost took her life away. It's not every day someone so young has to deal with her own mortality. My friends felt like life would go on forever, but I realized it was something happening now. And yet I didn't know what to make of it. Then you have her developing her first crush, only to have to deal with her strict grandmother. You too young to stare at boys. I wasn't staring. You staring like he alien from outer space. Boys not alien. They real. And they cause trouble. How do they cause trouble? You too young to know that. Ha <laughs> ha! Foreshadowing. Actually, Summer's relationship with her grandmother, or Obachan, is one of the main conflicts in the book. She is a very old-fashioned woman who seems to always make Summer's life just that more unbearable. Whether it's boys, cooking for the harvesters, what direction she needs to sleep, Obachan always finds a way to infuriate Summer and to give us some of the book's best humor. Seriously, the conversations the two have can sometimes be hilarious. But Obachan has been having terrible back problems, and Summer needs to cover for her, for if they can't keep up with the demands of the harvest, they will lose their jobs, and most likely their livelihoods. Along with Obachan, Summer has to deal with her brother Jazz, as he wonders why he can't make a single friend. Why doesn't anybody like me? He asked. I thought of saying, you have a bad temper, and you're weird. As the book goes on, you see what that bad temper is. He had such a bad temper that when he was angry, he sometimes banged his head on a wall or on whatever was handy. It's fair to say that Jazz is most likely on the autism scale. The book never actually labels him or gives a clear direct point of what is up with Jazz. My parents had taken him to three different child psychologists in Wichita. One psychologist said he had ADHD, one said he had PDD-NOS, and one said he had OCD. I like that they don't give him a classification, because the biggest themes about the book are to be happy with who you are, not trying to conform to another's ideals. Just because Jazz is different doesn't mean people should ignore him or force him to take medication to make others happy. 
Which ties back to Summer as she reads the book a separate piece. How it parallels with the idea that we never know who we are till certain events bring that call to action. It made me think that each person had all sorts of things going on inside of them. But most of these things would never surface unless circumstances were exactly right. I should check out that book sometime. If it sounds like I'm rambling right now, that's cause you're right. Again, this is a loose plot. Most of these different points just float around, coming and going as needed. Which you would think would make the book aimless. But it never goes off the rails. It's actually pretty consistent in its structure. This book tackles a lot of subjects, but it doesn't preach what it's about. It just is. It's laid back, but poignant. Simple, and yet complex. A children's book, but with adult themes. It has a charm to it that you would find in indie films. If I haven't convinced you to check out the book, I implore you give it a look. It's a very good book that has a lot of charisma that I found it hard to put down. Actually, I want to see what else Cynthia wrote. Kira Kira, Wee Flower, A Million Shades of Grey? Million? Shades? What about you, Internet? What's your opinion about the thing about luck? Once again, a special shout out to Sarah Acosta for suggesting the campaign. If you want to know more about We Need Diverse Books, links can be found in the description below. And if you have a book you would like me to review, let me know down in the comments. Next week, though, it's going to be a big one. For it will be my two-year anniversary doing this show. And I can't think of a better way to celebrate than going back to the man who started it all. Till next time. Have a nice day.